What is up guys, I'm Get Flanked, and today we're going to talk about an underrated skill in Rainbow Six Siege, and that is anchoring. Now the reason I say underrated is because you don't see a lot of tip videos about anchoring, you don't see people talk about it very much on YouTube at all, and I get it, it's not flashy, and it can be very boring to be an anchor. There's going to be times playing an anchor where you don't see a single enemy the entire round, and I think most people would rather play as a roamer, where you're running around, moving the whole time, and you know you have a much higher likelihood of seeing enemies and getting in gunfights. I get that. But you as a player, you need to be versatile. And if you don't know how to anchor and you only know how to roam, that's going to make you weak and very one-sided as a player. And you don't want that. So today I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to be a better anchor, how to hold down the objective for your team. And this is something that I've been forced to really work on over the last couple of months in my game. The team that I've been working with, the role where I kind of fit in is as an anchor. And it's forced me to learn how to fill this role and to get better at it. And so I'm ready to pass on what I've learned to you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover a couple different rounds where I'm playing this role, and I'm just going to tell you guys what's going through my mind, why I do what I do, and hopefully there'll be some things there that you guys pick up and that'll make you a better anchor. One of the things I've learned in adjusting to this role and really learning it is it's all about subtleties, and the difference between life and death as an anchor sometimes will be very subtle changes to your game. If I had my cross here, here, instead of here, then I would be alive. If I'd place my mute jammer here instead of here... I would still be alive. It's very, very subtle differences when you get into these fine margins at the higher level as an anchor. So keep that in mind as we're going through, and I'll talk about that some. But the first clip we're going to talk about is actually on the screen right now. You're seeing the prep phase. I'm playing as Mute, which, by the way, is a very good anchor in my opinion. He's very good in general, but the thing I like about a Mute is that you don't have to worry about getting droned out, which is one of your biggest enemies as an anchor, getting droned out and the enemy knowing exactly where you are. Because in general, you're going to be in your most powerful line of sight. And if you get droned out of that spot, then now you're moving to a less de desirable spot, one that doesn't have as powerful as an angle or something like that. So I like Mute for that reason. He allows you to hold down a line of sight and not have to worry about getting droned out nearly as much. So definitely consider mute when you're thinking about anchoring or anything else for that matter. When it comes to your team composition, I honestly feel like mute is used much less than he should be. He's very powerful and a lot of your strats will work better if you don't have to worry about drones in the objective or another part of the map. So if you haven't used mute in a while, give him another look. He's, he's good. Uh, he really is. So there's two minutes left in the round. We've got everything set up. I'm going to slide over now into my anchor position and just hold down a line of sight. And this is what you're going to spend a lot of time doing as an anchor and you need to get good at it and we're going to actually freeze it right there just to talk about this so why did i decide to pick up this line of sight well i'm basing it upon information on where i hear things opening where my teammates are making call outs where they may have seen people on cameras so at this point in the round i have a good idea that there are people coming from this side of the map so i'm trying to find an angle here that gives me the least amount of exposure, but still allows me to hold down a choke point. And this is a good one right here. I can see upstairs if anybody's walking on that um, uh, upstairs uh, walkway there. I can also hold down this uh, door right here, which comes from open area, which is a very common place for enemies to come from here. Now, remember that I said that a lot of the things that make a good anchor are very subtle adjustments. Well, you're going to see in this clip what I mean. My crosshair placement isn't perfect here, and you're going to see an enemy does come into screen eventually, and I miss my shots because my crosshairs weren't set up. A lot of times in these situations when you're holding these angles, you're just going to get a quick peek, and you have a split second to land bullets and get the kill. And if your crosshair placement isn't right, you're not going to get that kill. Now, as you're holding these lines of sight, you need to be processing in your mind all the information coming from your teammates as far as callouts, and also where are you weak? Do you have a teammate covering your back? Are you next to a soft wall? Are you on top of a soft floor? Where are you weak? And that's the stuff that you need to be processing to make sure you're in the strongest spot possible. So there you see I missed my shots, and we're going to freeze it again right there. Did you notice how I went from crouching to standing up to peek that the last time? That's, again, one of those subtle adjustments that you learn to make as a peeker because maybe that guy that I was you know trying to kill there, he set up his sights 
on my head level whenever I was crouching. A lot of people do that. They adjust to where they saw me last. So now if I peek standing up, if he does get shots off before I do, he's going to hit me in the belly or there about instead of my head. So that's, again, just subtle adjustments. You don't want to peek the same profile twice. You want to change your profile, change your angle, whatever you can do to throw them off and make them adjust their aim. Okay, now you're going to see me tear down this barricade here. And the reason why is I want to give myself more possibilities on where I can peek from, where I can attack them from. If they can pigeonhole me into this door, meaning that they know that I'm going to have to peek this door and this door alone, then I'm going to be much easier to kill than if I have another place that I can peek and attack them from. So that's my whole thought process with tearing down that barricade. Now, whenever I did that, I got IQ's attention there and that helped me get that kill. So um, now I'm holding down this line of sight again, but I'm changing it slightly. I backed up. I'm not holding that same line of sight that I had before, but still looking at that door because I have good information that there's still another one back there. Now coming up here, you're going to see another example of bad crosshair placement right there. You're also going to see it right here. Um, I rotate to this and I'm peeking it. If I had had my sights up just a hair here, you'll see him come on the screen. I land body shots and I could have gotten the kill without him putting me down if I had just had my sights up a little bit more. Luckily, I do get him down. My teammate's close. He comes over, finishes him off and revives me. Now, after I get revived here, you're going to see I pick up a kill on Buck, and there's not really a whole lot to go over there, but pay attention to the last kill. It's a 1v1. I know where he's coming from because he killed my teammate, but remember me placing that shield in the beginning of the round. The shield, again, is something that you don't see used as much as I think that you should. Yes, Nitro Cell is powerful. I get that. You can kill people with it, but right here's an example of how good a shield can be in these situations, particularly with a mute. So he had to jump over that shield, and it made him completely exposed, his entire body and really defenseless in all honesty so um I, I probably would have got that kill without the shield but it put him in a much weaker position because we had that Okay, moving on to the next clip, and in the first clip, you heard me talk a lot about crosshair placement and how I didn't do a very good job of it. In this clip, you're going to see me do a much better job of crosshair placement, and I'm holding this line of sight. I wish I had an ACOG for this, but I don't. I'm mute. He doesn't have one available, but I'm holding this line of sight. My teammate just died from there. I know somebody is very likely to come from this doorway, so I'm just being patient, and as I'm holding it, I'm making very small adjustments to where I think head level is going to be on the enemy, and you're going to see he peeks real quick. Quick. My crosshairs are exactly where they needed to be, and I get that headshot really quick. Then I pick up that kill on Ash, and I want to talk about that real quick. One of the things that separates the very low player to the average to higher level players is being able to get back-to-back -back kills without getting traded out by the enemy. And that's a perfect example right there. Knowing that we're in, what, a 2v5 at this point, I know that once I fire, they're going to rush me. So knowing that, I moved and picked up another angle where I think they were likely to come from and picked up another kill on Ash there. Learning to get a kill, change your angle, predict where the next enemy is likely to come from, and then having the discipline to not reload or do anything that compromises your position to defend yourself is a huge step in becoming a better player and a better defender in this game. Okay, last clip here, and I couldn't talk about being an anchor without putting a mirror clip in. And you guys may recognize this clip. It's been in a video before, but I think it's a great example of playing Mira, playing an anchor as Mira, and just some of the techniques that I use when playing Mira. Now, I purposely showed this part of the round in this clip. It's boring. There's nothing for another minute, I believe, before I actually see somebody. But this is the life of an anchor. And as I'm doing this, I'm listening for where they might be reaching from. I'm listening to calls for my teammates. And just, again, thinking about where I might be weak from. The door behind me is probably my biggest weakness there. So I'm also looking for Twitch drones as a Mira. That's bad news for me. So those are the things that I spend my time doing during this part of the round. Again, it's not flashy. It can be boring. But here in a second, you'll see how it can be exciting too, playing as an anchor and how you can win rounds and um, you know make some good plays for your team. All right, now at this point you see a drone, and that's a good indication that the enemy's getting ready to push, and also what direction they might be pushing from. Not every time, but a lot of times, whatever the direction the drone comes from is what direction the enemy is going to push from. Now there you see Habana just dropped into bathroom. She just threw her gadgets onto my window. I pick up that kill right there, and then I make this play with the nitro cell into bathroom. She's stuck in there, so I have her right where I wanted to, and I pick up the kill with the nitro cell there, and we're going to freeze it. 
so many people think that because you're playing a Mira or an Anchor that you have to play passive, that you can't be aggressive, and that's just not true. The play I just made right there was an aggressive play, and it worked out well. I got two kills. And I saw that Habana was putting herself in a bad situation, which was bathroom, and I knew I could get an easy kill. I didn't actually know that Sledge was there, but I peeked, and I got the shots on him quickly, so that was kind of luck. But the Habana kill was me just being aggressive and using my Nitro Cell and taking advantage of her putting her herself in a bad situation now my mirror is open and a lot of people think that once this mirror gets open that it's useless well now it's just kind of going back to that first clip i have two places i can peek from i can peek from the door and i can also peek from my mirror that's now opened and you're going to see that i do that to take it you know to, to, to get a couple more kills in this round and that's how i end up playing this you don't have to run away from a mirror just because it got opened now, sometimes as an anchor, the pressure is going to mount. There's going to be bullets flying everywhere, and you're going to feel like you're about ready to die. And maybe you are about ready to die. But it doesn't mean that you should panic and just get up and sprint and run for your life. If you're in a position where you've got a nice angle and you know that there's a really good chance the enemy's going to come from that direction, you should continue holding that and take advantage of it. And maybe you will die. But if you can take a couple out with you, then you put your team in a position to win. And that's what I did in this clip. I ended up getting four kills here, and, and the last enemy alive does kill me, but I put my team in a great position to win, and I stayed on my line of sight even though I was getting pressured from both directions and took those last two out because I didn't panic and run away. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I know that being an anchor is not flashy. It can be boring. A lot of you guys don't want to play this role, but it, once you get to the higher levels and you are playing with a consistent team, somebody's going to have to fill this role. And if it's you, hopefully you picked up a couple things from this video that will help you out and make you better at it. If you guys did enjoy this, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll have more coming your way here soon.